I shall Welcome, welcome to all the guests. Shalom Aleichem, what's your name? Eitan. Eitan what? Orkavi. Orkavi? And you? I'm his father, Asher. Asher Orkavi. Shalom Aleichem from? Boston. Boston. You know, when you say Boston, I have to say my grandfather's the rabbi there, you know. The Mark Kosovitsky. You ever heard of him? Yeah, okay. Shalom Aleichem. We have some real guests here. Who else? Your guest? What's your name? Title bomb. American? Lomamash. You're trying to learn English. So where do you live? Efa Tagar? Yer Shamir. Yesh ta shiur shal Yisraelim tetzeh achshav. Ze lo bishul am... Bechad esre ze la Yisraelim. No, slicha, slicha. Ani lo zorek af echad. Shkoyar. Toda. Shalom aleichem. Mi od? Ech kurun lecha? אז זה עם המשקפיים למעלה. יוני, שלום עליכם. אוקיי. או, הוא הביא אותי איתך, שלום עליכם. זה הפעם הראשונה שלך? לא, זה הפעם. אייבי, זה הפעם הראשונה שלך משיקגו, שלום עליכם. אה, הוא רוצה קצת... תגיד לו, תגיד לו, תגיד לו, תגיד לו, לא מהצד. אה, אה, גארי, מה נשמע גארי? זה גארי, אתה רואה גארי? This guy, when I was 10, he was 10 years old, he stumped me. He asked me a kashan. What was it? Love it or something? What was the kashan? Yeah. How many years ago was this? 
Three. Almost four. Yeah. And who are you mechaven to? Okay, Gibal. Okay. I didn't know you were know you're here. So Malachim. Move over one, please. Ah. Okay. Um do we do emails today? I don't know. We uh Yitzi Eisenthal from Belgium, MDY Belgium, he says has a request that I should give the Shir in Yiddish. Shir in Antwerp, Yiddish is spoken by almost everyone, every type of Yid. I'm sure we can get to more people around the world. I, I actually wish I could do it in Yiddish. I have to brush up on my Yiddish. I don't speak very well. I understand very well. And I could, I used to speak better. Maybe if I brushed up, I'll learn with the Belzer Chavrus a little bit. And then in a year from now, come, come in, guys, come. Didn't stop me to give Shir in Hebrew. Woo. Also requested was a call or some phone number. We have that. And if only goes your phones, no access to the internet at all. Thanks for all you do. Shkoyach. What is this? Uh, we don't need to see this now. I mean, I can just listen to this shir. I decided to start listening to your shir every morning on the way to work. The way to work takes me about 15, 20 minutes. I heard that you got interviewed by What a Day. I was really inspired by the interview. It made me really emotional. So I decided to start listening consistently. I was listening to you. Said about the buddy program. So I called my brother in the middle of the shear and we made up to message each other done every day when we listen to the shear. Great idea. Got really, really emotional when I saw the kids program. That's really, really amazing. I think it should be implemented all over the world. I also like the kids' pop quiz after the shear, the kahoot. Maybe we can do something tomorrow. Boy size to see them here. You're about the Chemesh, like around the corner somewhere. What is it called over there? Or Torah. Um, and there's going to be the Kahoot game, Bezrat Hashem. It's a Gishmaki game. You, you QR code it into your phone and you become part of a game and you compete against everybody that's in there. So we, in the Hebrew show, we had like 20 people competing. And the quicker you answer and the more accurate you answer, you're on top and it shows you who's leading and, you know, it becomes very competitive. I was like last place, I think. I think it should be implemented all over the world. I also like the kids. Are, yeah, maybe we can do something like that for everyone to have a pop quiz of the day. Thanks for inspiring me and many others. Keep it the great work. P.S. I hope to open up a school one day that teaches kids your way of learning. Did he write it before or afterwards? I don't know. Yaakov Yosef ben Chama Rus Tziner. Yeah. There's a Kahoot quiz every day. Did I show all the pictures from around the world to the English? Yes. The English also? Great. So we're going to go weiter. Sponsors we have to do, yeah. Uh, the Mishnah is sponsored for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. Paras HaChodesh. The Nishmah Zachai Ben Meishu, the Nishmah Zachai Bas Yosef. Paras HaChodesh. The Refua Shleiman of Tali Herz, Ben Henya Leia, hidden tzaddik in our generation. Paras HaChodesh, Refua Tanevish and Gufa, Brian Abino, Bat Miriam, Bela, Natal Kolben, Urebrocha, Urebrocha, Bat Brian Abino. I just heard bad news. Uh, my uncle, in other words, my father's older brother was Nifter today. And I, I want to make it to the Leviah. Um, which is, it's actually starting in the middle of the Hebrew shir, so I'm going to try to push the push it a little bit. Not the English one, because whatever, both. And um, it's going to be in Bnei Brak, so hopefully I can get there for some of it. Um, I did grow up with him, and he is my uncle. Um, his name is, I think, Sholem Ben Rifal. Lili Nishma Sholem Ben Rifal. Mo Landi, Lili Nishma, Sir Moshe Ben Shmuel Yehuda, the Meshgiach of Torah Vedas. Somebody wrote in, he says, I see you don't know what you're saying. And he's right. I didn't chap. This is by Moshe Wolfson. He was on the cover of the Mishpacha magazine this week. Uh, the Rav of Emunus Yisrael, the Mashgiach, the Mashgiach, they called him. So is the Shabbat Shalav and Aliyah. Lili Nishmas, Mrs. Ruth Steinberg from Manchester, Nifter this Friday, and the Shabbat Shalav and Aliyah. Parnas Hayyim, full refor. Yeshua Ben Miriam Zahav Aleah, Bas Shiro Bas Chemda. That's Lachem Parnasa. What do you say? Ah. Stingberg? That's not how it is. S-T-E-I-N is Steinberg. Okay, maybe in matches they do it differently. Eli Levi, Fischl's original driver. The Shir's leading Nishma, it's Rabbi Amram ben Simcha, as you're calling for that slacha of Elio Levi ben Simcha. Rabbi Yisai, we're holding by Gadda Gemara, Daf Gimel Amit Beis. Yeah? Hurdus. That we're holding? Huh? Oh, that's what we're holding. 
As the Gemara, Baba Ben Buta heichi az bilay eitz lehurdos lemister of the Beis Hamikdash. How did Baba Ben Buta give this idea to Hurdos? I'm going to see how he was survived and how he became his his eitzegeber. How did he give eitzes to Hurdos to destroy the Beis Hamikdash? V'amar Rav Chizda le lister inish beik nishto ad the boni beik nishto achrita. We didn't do this. You sure? Okay. So you, we just learned. That you shouldn't destroy a shul, certainly not a Beis Hamikdash, until you have another one built already. He saw the cracks in the Beis Hamikdash, and that, that's it; it's over. You got to build it quickly. The a kingdom, a king doesn't, guys. The a king once he decides to do something, he does it. We even have, I think, a Shtigal picture. Once the king says, I am going to uproot a mountain, here we go. He will get it done. He'll never take it back. So, Melo, we're not concerned. What was all concerned that we're not going to build a base of He will do it. Hurdos. I didn't say Shalom Aleichem to you. You guys, you come a lot, right? Yerubidi's, that's Rebidi's son? And you? Also, Shamalai, you, I don't remember. You were here also? Back in the day. Yerubidi Levitz. And uh, Mazel Tov. I, I can say Mazel Tov, no? Givaldik. Okay. Zog the Gemara. Hurdus, now the Gemara tells the story. Hurdus, after the base Chashmonoyav, he was an Eved Knani. He was a guy who was bought by the Chashmonoyim as a slave. He always wanted to get married to that youngster. And he, he heard a voice, a heavenly voice that said, whoever rebels today is going to be matzliach. He killed all his masters, whatever that means. He had a bunch of masters. He worked for all of them. I don't know. So he left all he, he only left this one girl from all the people that he killed. In other words, Beis Chashminoi had no one left. By the way, if I'm already saying this machusa uh, with the king, so Rabbi Yerzin Eish is the famous Maisa. The, the king said, if you're so smart, what, what doorway to the city am I going to come into? I'm leaving now on a hunting trip. I'm coming back. Which one am I going to come back in? So he said, okay, no problem. He wrote down a piece of paper and gave it to some other person. So the king comes back to the city and he says, okay, I, I think I'm going to go through the large one because he's going to think that I'm going to go through the large, but then he's going to do reverse ecology to the small. So therefore I'm going to go to the, no, you know what? That's not a good idea. So he went to the small one because of course he's going to, he's going to come to the large. I'm going to do this. Then he got really confused. He didn't know what to do. So he says, oh, I'm just going to knock a couple stones in and I'm going to go, I'm going to go through there. So that's how he opened up a little hole and he went in. And then he says, no, what do you say? So he showed him the, the thing. He says, Melech, pirates gather. King always breaks through, does whatever he wants. Anyway, we're a few lines in. So, when she realized that her whole family is dead and this Russia wants to marry her, she went onto the rooftop and she screamed out, Omra. She said, because, you know, Abdu, anybody that claims that he's from the Chashminoim, you should know he's a slave. Why? No one is left besides myself. By Yinukta, Noflami Gorilara, and that girl jumped to her death. Oh, we always have that Shiloh. The Gemara has brought down a bunch of stories like this that people jumped. Bruria killed herself. Uh, the, 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 the Talmud killed himself. Are you allowed to kill yourself in certain situations, etc.? The Ramban says the reason why no one was left over from Beis Chashminoi is because the Pasuk says that the, the kingdom, the Melucha goes to Shevet Mi Yehuda and Memela, since they were over on that, it doesn't look like such a large infraction, but it is, that no one was left over from Chashminoi. Even though they, they thought they might have deserved it, they... They, they freed Klai Yisrael, etc. No. That's why not a single one was left over. Says the Gemara, He took her body and put it into honey. 
try to preserve her body with honey. Ikada Amri Balel, seven years. What did I say? Oh, seven years. Ikada Amri Balel, some say he had relations with her body. Ikada Amri Loi Balel, no, no relations. Amri Lo Balel, if he was with her, the reason why he preserved her was for his eight Sahara. With Amri Lo Loi Balel, how the time, how the time, no, Kechid the name, Rubas Melch Nasab. He would prove to people, oh, look, she was my wife. Omar, and then he said, Man Dorish, He was very upset. He's now the king of the Jews. But there you have a posse, It has to be from your brother, not a slave. <laughs> Rabbanon, it must be the Rabbanon. Says the Gemara, terrible, terrible thing. Come, Katlinu, Lekul Rabbanon. He killed all the Rabbanon. So, Taisa says it's not literally all the Rabbanon. He did leave over some. Shafki Lebav Ben Buta. And he left over Baba ben Buta. Le Mishkal So, if you remember here, I'll just show you this little thing here. It's not, it wasn't that Kishmak at the time. Have ben Baba ben Buta, Baba ben Buta, Dina, Baba ben Buta standing there. Azlis ben Tavris Areshay. He broke the two candles. That's Dr. Factor, dressed as a woman. I have to bring it on my head. That really hurt, by the way. <laughs> I want to give you a bracha. They should have two sons, just like Ellie Stefanski. <laughs> I already have 18. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, Bob and Buta got two candles over his head because this woman thought, the husband said, put the candles on the window, on the door, on the bava, and, he, and she thought she, he meant go break them over the galadar. Not a peep came out of his mouth. He gave her a bracha. He realized what happened. He gave her a bracha. So the Ben Yehuda says that's why the king Hurdus knew the story. So he said, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna spare him." That's the Ben Yehuda's thing. Like he's such a tzaddik, such a nice guy. I'm gonna spare him. Says the Gemara that he left him because he wanted to. He wanted a smart person, an advisor. Top of Daf Dalin Omidal. Ahadule Klilo Diyole. So he made him. No, got a satar from here. You all know I went on four safaris, but this you don't know. I took an unbelievable picture of a leopard. <laughs> it's an unseen picture. It's one of a kind, and I have a lot, a lot of pride in this picture. And um, I, I usually, any opportunity I have to show it, I don't really show it. And today, today's no different, but because it's Moshe Shabbos, what happened was we were in a Jeep, and uh, suddenly we see the leftovers of a porcupine. So I thought it was a very good idea to get out at that point and uh, pick up some of the, the quills. I don't know if it's a pork, I don't know what it's called. It's like a porcupine. So the guy said, listen, it's not such a great idea because it's just eaten, it's fresh. You can see the blood is still bubbling over there. And that means there's a leopard five feet away, 10 feet away. So anyway, we looked around. Wasn't, he says, okay, you want to take the risk? Go. I said, listen, for the sheer, I need to do it. So I jumped out. Emes, I, I got these things. They're beautiful. These are the quills. So I'll give them out here, but make sure they get back to me. Why, why? You make sure. You could... Not this, not this, not this. This, like this? All my kids have some. They're, they're very, very sharp. So this is what he put. He put, he put a bunch of them like this, facing his eyes. Shalom Aleichem Rav Geffen. And uh, poked out his eyes. I'd rather show the leopard than the porcupine, even though it's... Just leave it off for the rest of this year. Because I usually don't like to show this picture. Says the Gemara, his eyes were poked out. So Hurdus, now that he's blind, Hurdus tricks him and sits down next to him, pretending he's just a common person, not the king. Omar, you see this terrible slave referring to the king, Michael Ovid, he's terrible. Killed all the Rabbanon. Omar lay, my avid lay, knew what do you want me to do about it? Omar lay, nalti imar, curse him. Omar lay, ksiv, gambim adokha, melech al tikal. You're not allowed to curse a, a king, even in your own mind, you can't curse him. Omar lay, haylav melechu, he's not even a king, he's a slave. He's trying to get something bad out of him. Omar lay, vilay, 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 So, he's not a king, but he's wealthy. He, he has all the, the, the money of a king. Even in your own bedroom, you're not allowed to curse a, a wealthy person. So he says he didn't like that. So let him be a Nasi. 
He says, no, you can't curse a Anasi, even if he's the head leader of Klai Shal, not a king. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to curse Anasi. The Rugged Shalver says from this Gemara, to me it was a big Chiddush, there's a lot of people that poke fun at certain Rebbes. Rebbes that are Amaratsim. The Rebbes that, uh, you know, got, got the, they became a, a Rebbe because their father was a Rebbe. But they themselves, they never opened up a Sefer. So the Rugged Shalver says, no, you're not allowed to make fun of them because L'kal Pachas, they're a Nasi. They're a leader in Klai Yisrael, so Nasi also, but Nasi Ba'am Chalei Sar. You know how to talk bad about something like that. Omer Lei, Bo Yisem Ha'isa Amcho. Ba'hai La'a, Bo Yisem Ha'isa Amcho. So this is a good one. A lot of people use this excuse, and, uh, including myself. I just happened to be learning the, the Halakhas of Lashon Hara two weeks ago, and that's where we were holding. The, 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 there's a het there to talk to Lashon Hara about somebody that doesn't do Ma'isa Amcho, meaning... Somebody that doesn't, that doesn't keep one mitzvah, it's known that he doesn't keep a certain mitzvah. He's, he's not makbin in a certain thing. So you like to discuss, you like to talk that thing, you like to talk about that thing, and, and there's, a, there's a few rules that you're not allowed like to, like to put him down with it, you like to tell people, look, he's not makbin in the salacha, etc. There's certain, not, to be, not to go lightly on it, but there is such a heter. Certainly if somebody doesn't do all the Torah, he's not do, he doesn't do all the mitzvahs, so he's certainly not an oisim ha'isam. Here's a murderer killed the Tamid Chachamim. He's not. He's certainly not an Oisim Ma'isa Amcha. He's not a Oisim Ma'isa Amcha. Ishkoyach. Still missing the larger one. Okay. Omelei, Mr. Finomine. So Bob and Buddha says you're right. He's not Oisim Ma'isa Amcha. I'm scared of him. Omelei, like the Inish does the Emily. There's nobody here. It's just me and you in this room. You might be blind. You don't have. It's just us. Us two. Who's gonna tell the king? The birds will, I don't know what, somehow it's going to get back to him. It says that in Chulin, it says that Hurdas had, I don't know, it was hundreds, thousands of birds, like a mill of these um, parrots, birds that would speak and they would say, something like that. They would say, they give him covet. He liked it. He liked the covet. So maybe that's what it's referring to. Kids, we had birds. There's a, a Maisa with a, a Jewish guy in Russia. He had a, a parrot and he trained the parrot to say, death to Stalin, death to Stalin. So one day, there's a knock on the door. He looks through the people and he sees the KGB. He says, oh, hey, if they say death to Stalin, they'll kill me. So he takes the bird, he takes the parrot, and he throws it in the freezer. <laughs> he shuts yeah. the freezer. The guys schmooze with him, the stat, and they leave. He pulls the bird out. He thought, that's it, it's over. No, the bird is alive and well. The bird says, long live Stalin, long live Stalin. So with us, what's, what's Pshat? He says, anybody that's in Siberia for half an hour would start saying long live Stalin. <laughs> so tomorrow, I'm like, I know. So now he reveals himself to him. He says, listen, I'm, I'm the king. If I would know that Rabban are like you, that are careful not to curse the king, even when no one is there in their own head, in their own I wouldn't kill anyone. I wouldn't kill any of the Rabbanah. So now I want to do tshuva. What do I do? Whoever doesn't know this, you got to see this. This is where you got it from, the stomach. Old oh, one, but a good one. No? Oh, but a good one. A global cause of Taira unity. Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah. Darker, man. All right. I think you've seen enough. Oh, that was my favorite, I think. Bekitzer, oh, here's Hurdus, Hurdus Avda. Kiner mitzvah v'toyra ar. Toyra is the light, the light. Yelech v'yasik ba'ir shaloylam. So you destroyed the light, you took away the Tamid HaChachamim, you have to bring the light back to the world through the building of the Beis HaMidosh, rebuilding the Beis HaMidosh. Tachsev, v'noar v'yelech kol ha'goyim, all the nations will come to the Kaisal, to the, to the Beis HaMikdash. I'm saying the Kaisal because I've seen some funny things there. I've seen, 
I saw a Chinese guy take his cell phone, put it into the castle, into the stone. I guess his wife in China was talking into him. I saw, and then I also saw like guys from Africa doing the whole Pishit Yudai and Like 10 of them were doing Ishtachava there. All the nations are going to go there. Igad Amri Achim Amalei. Husima, the same idea, just instead of the oil, it becomes the eye. Husima Eina Shaloylam. You took away the eye from the world. A boy say, where do we just lane this? What does it mean? Does anybody remember what it's talking about? Anybody? Don't answer together. Huh? Who? Not bad, not bad. Why do we need the youngsters to answer? Any adult? No. He knows. He said, say it loud, no? Chatat Nasi. It's the Chet of Avid Zara. When, when the Bezdin says that you can do a certain Avid Zara, close. Yeah? So it says, the eye of the nation. Yelech, in other words, the Bezdin, the Tamil Chacham, the eye of the nation. Yelech, so you have to deal, you have to build, rebuild. The eye of the world, the Chsiv, Hinini, Mechalaz Mikdashi. Hashem says, I'm going to destroy the Mesa Mikdash. Goin Uzchem, the strength of your pride. Machmad Inechem. The, the, how do you say Machmad? Love, the, is a better word. Inechem, the what? Machmad is not the pearl, but okay. That's what he says? That's, yeah, there's a better word than desire. Machmad Inechem, Chemed, okay. Of your eyes. Anyways, the base of English is your eye. It's the eye of the world. Omale. So Huda says, Mustafinum and Mahusa, I'm the king of the Jews. But what about the, 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 the ruler, our rulers, which are the Romans? What would they say? So he is the one that gives the ideas. Omale, Shoda Shlicha, send a Shliach, Velezel Shata. He should go for a year, Velakim Shata, and it'll take him a year to be there. Velahed Shata, it'll take him a year to come back. Total, three years. Adhach, Velachi. Once he, until he comes back, Sasri <coughs> Vnai knock it down and rebuild it. Ovadhachi, that's what he did. Shalkhule, so the Romans finally, after three years, they told him, if you didn't knock down the base of English, don't do it. And if you knocked it down, don't build it. They were scared to knock down the base of English. Oh, and we know your trick. If you knocked it down and you built it, rebuilt it, Abd Bisha, you're a terrible slave. Basar Dabd Miss Malchin, you after you do stuff, you, you do and then you ask questions. And if you, you think you're so cool because you have all these weapons, Sivroch Khan, we know your lineage, we know who you are, you're just a slave. Loy Rako, you're not a king. Loy Barak, you're not the son of a king. Hurdus Abdo, you're just a slave. Klan Yemis Abed, how did you become a king? You freed yourself, you killed your masters. My Reiko doesn't mean Reiko, Machuso, you're king. This is David HaMelech saying when Yoyev killed Avner, he said, I can't do anything to, uh, to Yoyev. Why? Because I'm, 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 I'm king. I just became a king today. I'm, I'm, I'm new at this. I'm scared of him. Who did they call in front of? Yosef. Avreich means Av, a father. Reich of a king. King. Amri. Says Gemara Mishalei Ro Binyan Hurdus. Whoever didn't witness the beautiful base Hamikdash that Hurdus rebuilt, Leirab Binyan No Miyama, we never was able to see a real building. But my Banye, how did he do it? Omar Abba Bavni Sheisho Umarmiro with white marmiro's white marble, Avni Sheisho's green marble. Here, something like this. Ikid Amri Bavni Kuchla. In addition to the green and the white, he also used blue, something like. Uh, so this mirror, this might be the green and white. This is just, uh, doesn't mean that this is what it looked like. This is just to the Saber Sayanayim. And this is with the blue. Uh, something like that, maybe. I have no idea. Anyway, Apik Sofa, Vail Sofa. The reason, and this looks, it's supposed to look like a wave. As Gemara says soon, this is the art scroll, Avin Sofa, this is what he did. In other words, Instead of the bricks going one on top of the other, they came out, one brick came out, one brick was in, one brick came out. This is a side view. What you see on the, on the right is the side view of coming in and out. So that it could, you could put cement, as, as he, you see over here, it's filled with cement. 
Sovar Limishai Bidahava, he wanted to coat it with gold. Omri Rabbanon Chifke, leave it alone. The Hoki Shaper Tfei, this looks nicer. The Mechze Kidvoso de Yama, because it looks like the waves of the ocean, which is also in this week's parasha, the Tchelas, the, the blue looks like the, the waves of the ocean, which some say reminds you of the sky, which reminds you of Kosh etc. So it does have to do with, with uh, this week's parasha, Tchelas. Anyway, Zogdi Gemara. How was Baba ben Buta allowed to give the Eitza to this Rosh Ahurdus to rebuild the base of English? Why was Daniel punished? You shouldn't give, a, you shouldn't give good ideas to, to Rishayim, to Goyim. Shinemar. Lohei Malcolm Milki Yishap Yishpar Allah. He told Nebuchadnezzar that he gave him advice. Malko, milky means advice. Yishpar Allah. It's going to be good for you. Bechatoch b'tzdaka proik. And your sins you'll get rid of through tzdaka. V'aviyasach. Another way of saying it. Avera b'michan onion by by having chen to the aniim. We know the story that he told them: if you give tzedakah to the to the Jewish slaves, to the Jewish aniim, you won't be punished. And then there's a lot of noise, there's a big noise. He came out, what's going on? He says, these are the aniim you're, you're supporting. He says, get get rid of them. As soon as he said that, he turned into something like this, he turned into some gross animal. And he was, he was like that for seven years, I think. This is old stuff. Anyway, Zog Gemara. So it says in the pasuk. You'll, you'll, you'll prolong your, your peace. You're not going to get punished. Just you see from here the, the, the power of tzedakah, the power of building a shul. It also says, everything befell Nebuchadnezzar. It also says, it was pushed off by 12 months. So you see that Daniel's Zaytza gave him 12 months of peace, and he got punished. How did he do it with Baba Ben Buta? First of all, Baba Buta was like a woman. So we still have to care for him. Even though he's a Russia, we have to kill for him. It's unbelievable. Hurdus, sorry, Hurdus. Who did I say? Baba Buta had to take care of Hurdus. The base Hamigdosh is different than a shol. Not different than a shol, but he had to give him an Eitzah to rebuild the Beis Hamidosh because he needed the kingdom to rebuild it and the Beis Hamidosh was in this repair. How do we know that Daniel was punished? Now, throughout Shas, we see that the hay is interchangeable with the Ches. So, to cut. So we'll say, Batikra Esther, Lachatoch. Bomerav, Hasoch, this is a Daniel. So, Anich, Lamando, Amar, Shachatchu, Migdulasach. If Daniel was there by Nebuchadnezzar, by Avil Merudach, and by Balshatzer, and finally Achashverosh got rid of him, that's very embarrassing. So that was a, that was a, a punishment. Chatoch, he cut him out. But if the word Chatoch means that his words are, everybody listens to what he says, it's Nechtach al Piv, Michael Meimar. He wasn't punished. He says the Gemara, the Shadu li Gubadari vivaso, because they sent him in to the lion kid then. So what? So what? But he wasn't killed. No, it's really scary. You have lions, not stam lions, lions that were starved for days. You put them in there, and they, the, the, no, I, there was, there was almost something, but no, because I, I don't want to depict Daniel. You can't depict Daniel. Ah, the lions, yeah. N- not like the lions that I... I was thinking about showing the, the lions that I walked around with. But they, weren't starving. they weren't starving. And they're used to people. Rabbi said there's a famous Misa. You probably all heard of this. The, there's a guy, a Jewish guy, that was thrown into the lion den. Starving lion. And the, the first lion came to attack him. And he whispered something in the lion's ear. And the lion turned around and walked away. 
So they asked him, what, what's Peshat? What happened? And he said that he told the lion, listen, I'm Jewish. By the Jews, after a good meal, the speeches. The boy said, tomorrow, Elimelech Goldberg is going to give us a good speech in the middle of the meal. Where is he? He's somewhere, no? I, I thought I saw him here tonight. He's hiding somewhere? Where is he? Oh, here he is. He's over there. What are you hiding for? <laughs> Aren't they going to find out? What are you going to put on a mask? What are you gonna... Anybody else want to speak from the heart? Seriously, from the heart. Hartzig, let me know. All right. Zokti Gemara. Hakol Kimin Gamadino. Hakol Lasui Mai. It says in the Mishnah that some people, they decide to build a wall. You build six, five, 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 four, five, three. Hakol Kimin Gamadino. Okay. We get it. What does it come to add? We have a beautiful picture of Hutza Vedafno. Hutza are the palm tree, the, the leaves of the palm tree. People use it for schach. Dafna are these poles. So you put these poles in, and then you intertwine the, the uh, palm tree with the poles. So when we learned it in the Mishnah, I mentioned Taisa, I'll mention again that. Tosh says that anything less than this, if you want to do some flimsy plastic, or whatever, that's a minik shtus, and we don't care about it. This mini head you too, and we don't that you don't have to t- do. If the wall fell down, the the real estate and the stones belong to both. Asking more pshita, yeah. If two people build something and it's their property, so they divide it evenly. It fell into one of their rishos. Or one person took the stones into his own possession. The other one should prove it. If you remember at the end of Baba Metzia, we had something very similar. Where the two people were arguing about, it was two floors. Second floor and first floor and the stones. There's an argument who owns the stones from the first floor, second floor. They were broken, not broken. And we said that if somebody walks by, takes all the stones, put them to one person's property, the Allah is the other person has to bring proof that it's his stones. Even though we know that the city, let's say, they pushed it over. How come this is different? The answer is, because over here they actually own it 50-50. Every stone is owned by both. So Amela, just because you grab the stones and put it into your property doesn't make it yours. In that situation, 50% of the stones were owned by one, the other 50% were owned by the other. Once they come into one property, now we don't know what to do. Says the Gemara, So just to make this slightly easier, the Israelis are starting to come in. Hashem Yirachem. Okay. What it says in the Mishnah is in blue, the top line. The same Allah applies in a garden. If the Minag is to put up a wall there, then we do whatever the Mishnah said, five, six, three, four, so, but that's because this is Makam Shinagu. That's the minute. What if there's no minute? Just let's do a, a simple diok. If there's a minute to, to build a wall, so we do whatever the minute is. And if there's no minute, then you don't do a wall. Now we have to ask the question. Over there, the wording is the opposite. If it's in a valley where they, the minute is not to, so I'll infer from here the exact opposite. Hostama. But with, when there's no minig around, now you have to ask yourself the question, where is there more reason to put a, a fence? In a garden or in a bika? Raboisai, anybody with me? In a garden. Why in a garden? Because there's nice vegetables there, there's flowers, there's more of an ayin hara, more of a reason. If stam garden, no fence, so why stam bika, yes fence? There's more reason to put a fence in a garden. says, Gemara, hash to stam gino amrus lo, stam bika mibaya. So now let's see a buy in red. It goes like this: period, end the story. New paragraph. In a place where there's a minute to make a fence, meaning in a valley. It's two separate things. It's not. It's two separate sentences. Yeah, you're right, 100%. In a garden, you don't put a fence, and in a in a bigger you do, because it's more, more, I'm sorry, only because there's a minute to put in a, a bigger, that's why you do a fence. But Stam Gino, you don't have to. 
Right, you're right, you're right. Omar by Ochgam, Chain Stam Gino, Chain Stam Gino, that you have to. But when it comes to Bikkur, it depends what the Minog is. Omar Lay, Omar Lay Rava, Imkain, my Aval. So if we're already talking about Bika, the next line says Aval Bika. Look, in the parentheses, I, I put that word in myself. We're talking about a Bika. And then it says Aval Bika. It makes no sense, Aval Bika. We just spoke about a Bika. So now you go down to the green. Gino is like a makom shenagulikdor. It's like a bika, like a makom shenagulikdor. Sorry, a regular gino is like forget the bika. Regular gino is like a makom shenagulikdor. In other words, it's chomer. You make a fence in a gino in a avastam bika. Which is much less than a gina. It's like a place that there's no minig to do it, to build a wall. You don't make him build a wall. It says if a person is in a valley and wants to build a wall, he can't force his neighbor, but he can build it in his own property. And he puts some sort of sign, a simon that it says. My chazis, what does it mean? Omer Avuna, Achpele, Likarna, Labar. Here. We have some decent stuff here. Here's a wall. Now, just to familiarize yourself, the legav means inside, labar means outside. So if you're building the wall, the guy on the left, the boina, he's building the wall, he's building it in his property. So that's legav, that's inside his property. Labar is the neighbor's property. Okay, so it says like, let's read it now. Omer avona achmel lekarna labar. He makes the simon on the outside, in other words, in the neighbor's property. Think about it for a second before we do the sugya. What could be a problem if you build something, a simon in your, pr- what's going on? If you build a simon in your neighbor's property, what could go wrong? What? He'll cut it off. What could go wrong if you put it in your property? What could go wrong? The other guy will also build one in his property. So those are the two tzadim in the Gemara. So here, he builds the simon in his, in his neighbor's, he this, it's kind of pops out on top, and that's the simon. As the Gemara, Benevad Milagav, here we go. He should do it in his own property. Oh, if you do it inside your own property, he'll also add one of these guys, and now you don't know who's what, and he'll want 50%. As the Gemara, check out, look what he's going to do. Even if you have a simon on his, on his side, he'll knock it off. Now there won't be a simon on any side. No simon on any side. What do we do? 50-50. If you break down, everybody will know. You'll see the, 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 the chip marks. Some say no. The opposite. The Gemara was saying, Ravuna said you should do it. You should put the simon in your own property. Do it in the other guy's property. Oh, no. Milabar. No, he should. No, sorry. Not what you're saying. He should just do it on the other side. As Gemara. guys, If you do it only on the other side, then this is the picture of Ad, but the, the, we're not there yet. If you do it only in your neighbors, he'll knock it off. If you do it, now the Gemara is asking, this is what's going to happen. You do it in your side, so your friend will also add a piece. If you add something after the fact, anytime you add construction, you don't build it in one shot, people will notice it. But how could you say that it's, let's go back. Where is this right now? Ravuna says it should be in your property, Milagav, inside. In the Mishnah it says it's Milagav, Milabar, it's on the outside. Kasha, you're right, it's a good Kasha. Rabbi Yoichanan, oy vavoy, what's going on here? Maybe we should just try to get to the Mishnah, and then uh, tomorrow's daf is very, very short. Says the Gemara, Nishaya Bam Salamabar. Says Rabbi Yochanan, you should put cement on the top part of the wall, one arm on the top. Says Gemara, Venevel Magav, you should put it on your side, your own side. Then if so, Ovid Chavrei Milabar, Ramadi Divid Dehu. Then if you put it on your side, then your neighbor will take the same material and put it on his side, and nobody will know. What if, it's, if you put it on your friend's side, your friend will chop it off. 
Kiluva made the idea. People could see that there used to be like a, a layer of plaster, and now it's gone. Hutza, Amar of Nachman, Sinufa Yerechim Lebar. So if we go back to, where was that? Here, this guy. So the way it works is that the, oh yeah, I don't have it here. You have to send it to me. It's, uh, what's the name of the company? Life Share, a boy said Life Share by Ari Rosenstein. So, the, um, the decal, the, the palm tree branches, you have to tie them. So the Gemara says, you put it in the neighbor, the tying, the knots are in the neighbor's section. He should do it in his own. Then his, his neighbor will also tie them up, like right? They have like a certain knot. He'll do it in his side and you'll think it's his as well. He'll just chop it off, he'll cut it with a, snip it off with the scissors. Now there's no simon at all. Both sides don't have a simon, and then, therefore you should split it 50 50. Says Gemara, you're right. Mashik Latino, you put some mud all over it, and then he can't do it. Says Gemara, Ashtanami, Yosef, Chavrev, he'll take off the mud. Kiluva made the idea, you can tell when the, there was mud and there's no mud anymore. Abai Omar Hutza, Leslie Takanta, Libishtara. Abai says, when you have a wall made out of this flimsy stuff like this, you need Aiden to testify and write it down in the Shtar. They saw that there was a partnership, not a partnership, whatever they saw. But if there's an agreement between the two of them, Omele Rabbim and Parziko le Ravashi. So this we discussed at the Mishnah. Bomb question. Why should I put a simon and you put a simon? Let's both not put any simon at all. And tell me so. If it looks something like this, then there's a 50-50 split. Why do I have to put a simon and you put a simon? If we both built it. Says You're right, it's in a crazy situation where one person put his own simon. That's why his friend has to also put a simon. If he doesn't do it, the other guy will take it for himself. You get, you, the, the whole thing is for somebody that's a, that's a liar. That's going to go against halacha and try to steal a fence. That's why we're giving here eitzes for liars. What do you mean? The ratio also is about a guy that's a liar. When, what's the ratio? When they're in a valley and the other guy doesn't want to build the wall, so you build it in your own property. So I'm telling you a special halacha. If the other guy doesn't want to build, you can't force him. That's halacha number one. Number two, you should build it in your own property. Now, what do I do once you build it and the other guy wants to steal from you? This is what you should do. Wow, try to say that fast three times. El Seifa. Whew. If both of them want to build a wall, and both of them agree to build a wall, everything's great. So then I don't need Allah. Everything's great. So why do I, why do I have to even say that Allah? I don't have to say the Takana. We're talking about a wall made out of the palm trees. And this has come to exclude Abaya. According to Abaya. The only way to build such a wall and, and not have any trouble is to have Adam. You don't need any star. You just have to tie it a certain way on my side. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you tomorrow, Hashem, bright and early at 7. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you.